Hi, and welcome to What Never Was. Let's dive right in. This is a single-player exploration simulation. Unlike other simulations using avatars, this one does not allow you to individualize your character. You always take on the identity of Sarah. Her character is introduced to you through a black screen hey, phone Where call to her mother, which sets the stage Wait, for the actual what? game scenario. So Over time, as the but game I'm progresses, right you get to know Sarah, your in-game identity, know, better but, as you mom, learn more about her. If we wanted to phrase it in more analytical yeah, terms, we would it's say that this is one of the many what? ways that you what never was is an Grandpa's endogenous game, years. a term coined by Reaper. Okay. for games in okay. which the context yeah. is the game and I the player is literally put inside the game system which as we have been trying to explain to the educational games the folks for a long time now yeah. very conducive to learning getting back to sarah you first learn that her grandfather has recently passed away and that you are now in his attic to clear it out in fact the entire game is situated in his attic so we have a relatable real-life scenario here, but as we will see later, it affords some fantastical, mysterious elements. I should see if I can find the missing pages before moving this. A desk drawer. It's locked. Let's talk about the game world. Gameplay begins with Sarah standing in her grandfather's attic, which is a restricted but a very realistically designed digital game world. It reminds us of both G's sandbox and fish tank principles, or what Squire calls a possibility space or a world in a box. The player can move the avatar to look around and explore the space safely, and the environment is restricted and only allows for certain interactions that are essential for gameplay. Through exploration and puzzle solving, you will build up what Reber calls your identity as Sarah, the granddaughter. Hello, this is Howard James Wright with a message for my granddaughter, Sarah Elizabeth Wright. Does this globe have anything to do with Grandpa's message? What did the message say again? The world is full of secrets? From the tallest tree to the deepest river. Agency. The avatar moves around, looks around, and can manipulate objects using the keyboard. The intriguing environment invites the player to explore. Sarah stumbles upon various items lying around and in drawers and cabinets that okay. pique her curiosity. Through the ability of interacting with items, doors can be opened, lights switched on, um, journal pages and keys collected, tapes listened to, globes turned, and so on. And discovering details about the game's structure it allows some actions to be performed, but not others. Like you, the player, feel in control. And as G put it when discussing his principle of manipulation, almost as if your body has gone into that space. Reber calls this the learning aspect. In alignment with Reber's endogenous games framework, the learner actively, through exploration, tries to make sense of what is in the attic, which eventually leads to unraveling a mystery through puzzle solving. Additionally, knowledge is acquired through gathering and interpreting clues in form of journal pages, cassette tapes, and the necklace. Whoa. Serious woe. Hmm. The key I have doesn't fit here. As
As you might have noticed by now, the game affords several ways for providing the player with feedback. There is just-in-time feedback given through the environment. Some items can be manipulated and others can't. Through Sarah talking to herself, for example, when she says, that's locked. And through written hints on the this screen. There's also on-demand feedback. For example, when you are trying to solve a riddle, you can refer back to the journal pages. Or when you're trying to figure out which way to turn the clock hands, you can repeatedly look through the necklace to determine the correct position. You can retrieve essential information right when you need it. This type of feedback is part of okay. G's concept of problem-based learning, which is essential for learning through games. The end! So, when does the game end? What is the goal? While we are first made to believe that we're in the attic to clear it out, the environment and the player's agency quickly dismiss this goal and instead work to solve mysterious puzzles that tell us about Sarah's grandfather and, indirectly, about Sarah herself. The game ends when Sarah solves the grandfather clock puzzle. To solve this final mystery, an item intentionally selected to relate to the player's grandfather, players must leverage their what Reaver calls pre-knowledge, which was acquired early in the game while solving small puzzles such as the globe. After all, the ending might be mystical, yet somewhat unsatisfactory. Is there a deeper meaning to this? It feels like the end of this game was maybe just the beginning or the exploration-encouraging and skill-building sandbox experience and preparation for something else? Who knows? The game designers definitely left room for speculation here. Will there be a sequel? Let's keep an eye out for any signs. We may find out eventually. If you have any questions or suggestions regarding any of the puzzles or the mysterious ending, please share them with our community which, by the way, G calls the affinity group and Reaver would refer to as the social model. And post a comment below. Let's be particularly kind and responsive to any educators checking in because, as we all know, they can learn a thing or two from us. But that is a longer story for another time.